Welcome back to another episode, guys. Thanks for watching. Today, we're gonna be doing the hardware part of Daniel's GR86 K24 swap. If you guys haven't seen the first episode, that was basically like a layout of all the parts that we got from K-Power Industries. But now that we've got 95% of all the parts, besides a few little things here and there that uh, still need to be machined and custom made by K-Power, we're gonna go ahead and put everything on to the K24 and then hope and pray that the adapter plate for the transmission lines up and then put that whole assembly together on the subframe and bring the car down to see if it all will line up. So stay tuned. Engine's in, but it's probably gonna blow a hole in if we run it. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Okay, we're not going. Okay. What's the dash look like? Is the dash giving you any information? Well, I'm wondering how the OBD port has power. You want me to ignition it off? <laughs> there, it says accessory. There we go. Ignition's on. What's up guys, we'll get back to the video in a second. Real quick, we wanted to show you what we're gonna be doing this year, something new. From now until July 1st, we're gonna be offering a $1,000 cash prize. Basically, all you have to do is watch all the videos. In each video, there's gonna be around three to six questions that are pop quiz questions that'll pop up randomly. We'll have a link in the description below of each video. Click that link, submit all the answers that you can. If they're right, they'll count towards the raffle and increase your chances of winning $1,000 by July 1st. So please like, share, and subscribe, and best of luck to you. Back to the video. All right guys, so you might not have seen that part of the phone call, but we tried like 15 different parameters for the can. So what that means is stuff like the ECU control of like the AC, the brake pedal, the brake pressure, the wheel speed sensors, the traction control button, the gas pedal position, the clutch. So yeah, the Gen 1 stuff from Haltech, the coding for that uh, can protocol. Right now, they've never tried it on a Gen 2, but uh, Rick from Haltech and I just figured out that it's not seeing anything. So um, some of the signals are reading a value, but when you change something, like when you push the brakes, they don't show any change. So some of the signals, I'd say half of them say no signal. The other ones show a value, but then nothing changes when you move like the wheel or spin the wheel or something like that. So we're hoping right now that because the factory ECU is still plugged into the car, that this could be causing some interruption between the signal because eventually the Elite 1500 from Haltech is gonna be a full replacement ECU anyway. So fingers crossed, because if this doesn't work, then it's gonna be a, a much bigger endeavor to get this to run right. So stay tuned. On there, definitely not on there. And your motor mounts, bolts, and the bracket. Not that one. Ah, Toby, 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 Toby. We're missing the oil sprocket. Oil sprocket. Yeah. Shingle right. it there. Mmm. Mmm. The K power part. Meow. There's a fucking K power pulley. Hey, where's the super glue? The paragraphs are so short. That's not a paragraph then. Yeah, it's like multiple sentences, so that's a paragraph. 
No, four sentences minimum per paragraph. No, it's three. Is it three? Yes. Oh, I went to school like two years ago, I don't know. <laughs> Injector go there, man. Yeah, I'm gonna fight you. All right, guys. So we are at the point on Daniel's G R eighty six that the Gen one instructions were pretty much at a deciding point what to do now. So if this was already a confirmed full fitment bolt-on kit for the swap, then we would just be continuing with what we're doing. But because we are testing 4K power to see if the Gen 1 parts swap kit will fit on the Gen 2, uh, we're gonna do things a little bit differently. So on a lot of the other engine swaps we do, like on BMWs or other cars, um, all we do is drop the subframe with the engine and it's mated. So we're gonna do the same thing on the GR86. So, so far we've got a lot of the initial stuff out, like the exhaust, the drive shaft, the under panel. Fortunately, a lot of those things look very similar, or if not exactly the same as the Gen 1. So, right now we're gonna take off the uh, sway bar, front sway bar assembly, and then we're gonna get to the point of dropping the control arms, and then disconnecting everything from the top of the engine. I've also already got the transmission disconnected and the uh, shifter linkage. So hopefully once this drops, then we'll be able to check all the K-Power parts to see if it kind of is the same bolting locations. Uh, so stay tuned. guys so hopefully you can hear us over the fabrication department uh, grinding on some cages but anyway obviously the big stuff 
fit. Shout out to K-Power. Uh, glad that we're able to confirm that their Gen 1 swap kit, hardware wise, almost everything works onto the Gen 2. But before we go over the stuff that hasn't worked or isn't working so far, why don't we go over what did work? Uh, yeah, so pretty much so far, as far as subframe goes, it's completely the same as Gen 1. So like motor mounts and motor mount brackets, those bolt right up, the bolts are exactly the same, same torque spec for everything. And then as far as the trans goes, trans the same stuff, the notch, that part of the the uh, trans tunnel that it says to in the K-Power instructions. And then the same on the back of the firewall, you have to bend the uh, AC hoses and all that stuff. Which is all standard as part of their swap kit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just part of their um, chassis modification list. Um, that is all the same. Downpipe fits normally, um, no interference with the um, the firewall on the rear right or left corner. You know, obviously Daniel went with premium everything from K-Power. Yeah. So he bought all the upgrades to actually go onto the K24 and then refreshed all the hardware and any of the uh, wear and tear items like gaskets and stuff like that. So that's all in there. And then you got this nice valve cover. So I guess I'll start going over the stuff that is still in the air or hasn't been confirmed to work yet or we're gonna need to modify. Um, here, let's, let's pull this down. So because Daniel has this Sabre Designs uh, carbon fiber hood um, with the three vents, you can see if you go all the way down, it's going to intrude onto the second second vent. But if this was a stock hood, I don't think that would be an issue. So uh, we're gonna Daniel's gonna come and help us cut this, and then hopefully that'll shut all the way. Now that's a pretty easy thing to fix or correct, but I think the biggest thing besides the electronics, which we'll get to in a second, Anthony found out yesterday that the Gen 2 throttle body doesn't work onto K Power's manifold and the adapter or the mounting plate, right? Right there. Is this separate from the manifold? Yeah. Ah. So there's four bolts that bolts on this adapter, which are countersunk, and then these four bolts bolt up to here. Yeah. So you can see if you line up these, these two, you can just see how far these threads are. From the actual... Which Daniel and I were thinking about it last night. You could just put a Gen 1 throttle body on, yeah. right? And it would work. But again, a lot of these things that we're doing are for, you know, the, the future. Basically making sure that the full swap kit and, and K-Power has a swap kit that works for everybody down the line. Because again, like you guys it maybe have seen in the first episode, like the, the price to do all this isn't that crazy to begin with for how much power you're going to be able to end up putting on the car. Reliably. Reliably, yes. The other things that we need to address hardware wise are where to put the intercooler and the oil cooler. Fortunately, uh, Kenji and Greddy was nice enough to provide Daniel with this intercooler to start with. And you can see it would normally go here on Greddy's Gen 1 turbo kit, but because we have the splitter, splitter mounting plates. Let me put this down. Because we have the splitter mounting plates and then we also have the new performance air jacks, that blocks where the normal turbo intercooler piping would go on Grady's turbo kit. So we can't use that normal routing. We already cut the front bumper structure and we're gonna basically end up- Pretty yeah. much, we're gonna flip these end caps or end tanks and they're actually gonna go, instead of on the side, on top, and then we'll run intercooler piping through this kind of radiator structure here, straight into the turbo. Yeah, obviously the on manifold. the end tank. Yeah, on no, the end yeah. tank, yeah. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, we'll pretty much just either get a core or modify this one, cut off these, and make a whole end tank here with two additional caps going here. Yeah, and then obviously run that into the engine bay with some, some couplers, I told Daniel we should just go vibrant clamp on everything. Yeah. Make it super nice. And then the oil cooler, I had the idea of kind of copying the F80 and the G80 M3 oil can cooler. Even use one. Yeah, we could <laughs> even use the F80 uh, oil cooler from CSF 
and basically that oil cooler mounts flat and then we can even use the F80's like ducting yeah right to to have it pull from underneath the car so it'll enter from the front bumper down and then out the bottom of the car to cool it which will give us a lot more surface area uh, for heat exchange and then give gives us some room uh, in the front bumper you can even see like this kind of radiator is, is like kind of like a V so if we have an intercooler here there'll be this open space right at the bottom where the air can actually channel through and the plastic ducting from BMW is like $20 yeah. a piece yeah, it's so. not even that much yeah and then we don't have to design any curvature or anything like that so that being said there's some some uh, not too big challenges hardware wise but the I guess the saddest thing for me is that the electronics don't work so yeah. right now uh, luckily the guys from Haltech had one of their um, consultants doing a US tour and just so happened to be in the area at the right time he was nice enough to come by and uh, spend a few hours in the GR um, in person and check out everything that it needs so basically we narrowed it down that it needs a whole new gateway module but the bad news about that is that it's going to be about three weeks to get that and once I got that email it was kind of like the final thing telling us yeah we're not going to make it to Coda I mean you know getting the car done in two months for a swap that's never been done before on a car was always a lofty goal but we, we thought we could make it happen and hardware wise we could have made it happen yeah. it's just that there's no electronics for it and obviously the thing with Daniel is that he doesn't want to just make this car run and you know do standalone and do whatever it takes to get it to run which we could have done but it's more of a development partnership with K-Power to make sure that their swap kit works for everybody else down the line so that being said the hardware is 95 percent there and then now it's just figuring out all the electronics and the communications and uh, getting the wiring done but yeah since Daniel's car not, is not gonna go I didn't feel right taking the Supra to go to Coda when this is still needing to be worked on so no Coda for us this year but we do have some uh, interesting events coming up one to check off the bucket list so hopefully we can bring the Supra to that and go check that off hopefully in the next episode guys we have some uh, updates for the wiring and the like electronics and uh, get this thing fired up so stay tuned